Deep underground in an undisclosed location, This Is Tread Comics presents the 1941 movie serial, The Adventures of Captain Marvel. Adventures of Captain Marvel is a 1941 American 12-chapter black-and-white movie serial from Republic Pictures, produced by Hiram S. Brown Jr., directed by John English and William Whitney, that stars Tom Tyler in the title role of Captain Marvel and Frank Coughlin Jr. as his alter ego, Billy Batson. The serial was adapted from the popular Captain Marvel comic book character then appearing in Fawcett Comics publications with comics and Captain Marvel Adventures. Adventures of Captain Marvel was the 21st of 66 film serials produced by Republic and their first comic book character adaptation, not counting comic strips. The serial featured the Fawcett Comics superhero, placed within an original screen story. Captain Marvel fights a masked criminal mastermind called the Scorpion, who is determined to gain control of an ancient weapon. It is made in the form of a large metallic scorpion with adjustable legs, tail, and removable lenses that must be properly aligned in order to activate its powerful ray. During an archaeological expedition to Siam's volcanic valley of the tombs to find the lost secret of the Scorpion Kingdom, a device of great power, the Golden Scorpion, is discovered hidden inside a sealed crypt. While examining it, the device's quartz lenses are aligned and powerful energy beam erupts, causing an explosion, resealing the crypt. This allows young radio broadcaster and expedition member Billy Batson, who obeyed the warning on the crypt's seal not to enter, to be chosen by the ancient wizard Shazam. The wizard grants Billy the powers of Captain Marvel whenever he repeats the wizard's name. Captain Marvel's powers can be used only to protect those in danger from the curse of the Golden Scorpion. The crypt's entrance is quickly cleared. Then Captain Marvel enters Shazam, and quickly resumes his Billy Batson alter ego. The Golden Scorpion's power lenses are divided among the scientists of the Malcolm Archaeological Expedition so that its power can only be used by agreement of the entire group, who then return to the U.S. after their discovery. An all-black garbed and hooded criminal mastermind, calling himself the Scorpion, steals the ancient device after their return and sets about acquiring the distributed lenses. Several expedition members are killed in the Scorpion's quest, despite Captain Marvel's continual efforts to thwart his plan. Deducing that the Scorpion always seems to know what happens during the scientists' meetings, Billy later confides to his friends. Betty Wallace and Whitey Murphy, is suspicion that the Scorpion may be one of the Malcolm archaeological team. Discovering that one of the Golden Scorpion's power lenses was purposely left behind, cleverly hidden in the very crypt where it was first discovered, Billy Batson and the surviving scientists agree it must be retrieved. They return by cargo ship to Siam where, near landfall, they barely survive a typhoon before finally being rescued by Captain Marvel. They eventually retrieve the hidden lens, but it is stolen by the Scorpion. By accident, from a distance, the Scorpion observes Captain Marvel transforming back into Billy Batson. Capturing Billy and gagging him, the Scorpion interrogates him about his secret. Billy's tape gag is removed when he agrees to talk. Shazam! is his only response, and he transforms in a flash of light and smoke into Captain Marvel. The Scorpion's identity is then revealed to be one of the last surviving scientists, who is killed by a Siamese native who turns the idol's ray on him, vaporizing him. Captain Marvel tosses the Golden Scorpion and its power lenses into a volcano's molten lava to prevent them from ever being used for evil. Upon its destruction, Captain Marvel is instantly transformed back into Billy Batson forever, the danger from the device's curse having now been eliminated. Adventures of Captain Marvel was budgeted at $135,553, although the final negative cost was $145,588, a $10,035, or 7.4%, overspend. It was filmed between December 23, 1940, and January 30, 1941, under the working title Captain Marvel. The serial's production number was 1098. The serial was the outgrowth of Republic's lengthy failed attempt at licensing national periodical publications, DC Comics Today, Superman Character, 
Paramount Pictures successfully tied up all the characters' theatrical exhibition rights for its series of color Superman animated cartoons, produced for them by Fleischer Studios. The license that National Comics had provided to Paramount was exclusive and prevented other film companies from using the Superman character, even in the non-animated production. Undaunted, Republic's completed script was reworked with various changes. It now had an original masked hero, the Copperhead, standing in for Superman, subsequently becoming the mysterious Dr. Satan serial. The studio then approached Fawcett Comics about filming their most popular superhero, and they agreed. Director William Whitney, however, was skeptical about trying to adapt Captain Marvel after the problems encountered with Superman. In spite of this, Adventures of Captain Marvel became the first superhero film adaptation of a comic book character. National attempted legal action to prevent Republic from developing their arch rival's most successful character, citing Republic's failure at adapting a Superman serial. Their attempt was unsuccessful, however, and Captain Marvel went into production. Writing in his autobiography of the period, William Whitney revealed that in his court deposition he had claimed that both Superman and Captain Marvel were derivatives of Popeye. About a decade later, following an ongoing legal battle with National and a declining comics market, Fawcett ceased publication of all its comic book titles. In the 1970s the Dorman Captain Marvel family of characters was licensed and revived by DC Comics, which they ultimately owned up purchasing, adding a final chapter to the Fawcett. DC Saga The opening military scenes in the serial were reused footage lifted from Republic's 1938 film Storm Over Bengal. Republic cast Frank Coughlin as Billy Batson due to his physical resemblance to the character. There was, however, some criticism that Tom Tyler did not sufficiently resemble the beefy, baby-faced Captain Marvel. 8. At the time Tyler was a weightlifting champion and the serial costume matched Captain Marvel's original comic book appearance, right down to his being slender. By the time of the serial's release, the appearance of Captain Marvel had changed due to Fawcett Comics artist C.C. Beck changing the way he drew the character. Tyler was described as clumsy, knocking over props with his lanky arms. Punches and fight scenes would sometimes connect. Due to his convincing performance in King of the Royal Mounted, actor Robert Strange, as John Malcolm, was the obvious choice to be the identity of the Scorpion, but by the end of the serial he was just a diversion and not actually the villain. Republic's flying effects, under the direction of Howard and Theodore Lidecker, were performed using a dummy that was slightly larger than life, at 7 feet tall and made of paper mat so that it weighed only 15 pounds the uniform was made of thin silk and cotton jersey. Four pulleys were connected to each shoulder and leg calf, which were then strung on two wires so the dummy moved along them by its own weight. The wires were attached to two opposite objects running across the camera's field of view, and the dummy then slid from one to the other, giving the illusion of flight. This system was originally intended for use in their Superman serial. A prototype dummy was even built but later discarded. The flying pose used for the dummy, arms outstretched and back arched, was based upon a Captain Marvel drawing by comics artist Mac Raboy. If the dummy needed to be seen flying upwards, the cape was convincingly weighted and the dummy was then slid backwards. The film sequence was then optically printed in reverse, completing the flying illusion. Stuntman David Sharp was the human part of the effect. Dressed as Captain Marvel, he would leap from a high point with his body straight, as if able to fly, then roll to land at the last second. The combination of flying effects and stunts produced the overall illusion of a flying person. Sharp also performed other stunts as Captain Marvel, such as backflipping and knocking down attacking Siamese tribesmen in the first chapter. Some shots of Captain Marvel flying were filmed with Tom Tyler posed against rear projected clouds. Some of these scenes, however, show the suspension wires used to hold him up. According to author Eamon William Stedman, the flight scenes were the most successful illusion of such aerobatics ever put upon the screen, in serial or feature. The technique had been developed in the earlier serial Darkest Africa, 1936, and was later used again in the Rocket Man serials, King of the Rocket Men, Radar Man from the Moon, 
Zombies of the Stratosphere, and Commando Cody, Sky Marshal of the Universe, released during 1949-1953. By contrast, the lower-budget Columbia Pictures Superman serials, which eventually appeared in the late 1940s, used unconvincing animated cartoon sequences to represent various actions, most frequently Superman's flights. The animated scenes of Superman in flight were vastly inferior to those of Republic's live-action sequences in Captain Marvel. Columbia produced the cheapest serials of the era, and producer Sam Katzman was notorious for cutting costs to the bone. One of Captain Marvel's tunics later appeared as the costume of a member of the Kryptonian Science Council in the first episode of the Adventures of Superman television series, filmed in 1951. The lightning bolt on the tunic is partially concealed by means of an oversized collar around the actor's neck. After the usage in the Superman TV series, two Captain Marvel tunics were worn by actors in early episodes of the pioneering U science fiction TV series Space Patrol. Very early into the series, those Marvel tunics were replaced by custom-made shirts. At the Science Fiction Museum and Hall of Fame in Seattle, Washington, one of the remaining Captain Marvel tunics is on public display. Adventures of Captain Marvel's official release date was March 28, 1941, although this is actually the date the sixth chapter was made available to film exchanges. The serial was re-released on April 15, 1953, under the title Return of Captain Marvel, between the first runs of Jungle Drums of Africa and Canadian Mounties vs. Atomic Invaders. Due to the superhero nostalgia craze in the U.S. during the spring of 1966, resulting from the hit Batman television series, the serial was quickly re-released again, this time as a complete, nearly four-hour-long feature film. All 12 chapters were just strung together, each opening with the prior chapter's ending scenes and a plot synopsis. Audiences were forced to sit through a summation of what they had just watched in the previous chapter. And now, Dread Comics is proud to present the 1941 movie serial, The Adventures of Captain Marvel. Now our feature presentation, The Adventures of Captain Marvel, Chapter 11, Valley of Death. Storm has certainly gone down. Say, where's Betty? Well, I thought she was around here somewhere. Parson, I thought you got everybody off. I'm sure I had everybody accounted for, sir. She must still be in her cabin. She might have been knocked out when we struck. Quick, get me back to that ship.
out. They're swimming ashore. Come on. So you went to your cabin, Betty. Then what happened? I was looking for some important papers when someone struck me from behind. Have you any idea who it was? No. Well, why would anyone want to kill you? He must have been after my section of the map. He took my handbag. Was the map in the bag? No, it's in a waterproof envelope pinned inside my jacket. Oh, that was smart. Say, how do we get away from here? Kandapur. The native village is just across the hills. We can reach there in a few hours. Good. Let's get started. I suggest we rest up for a couple of days and start for the Valley of Tombs day after tomorrow. I think that's a sensible idea. Suits me. Oh, Billy. Yes, sir? You and Whitey see what you can round up on the way of cars and equipment. Yes, sir. Come on, laughing boy. Some days you don't even pay to get up. from our master, the Scorpion. White infidels plan to enter the sacred valley the day after tomorrow. He will give you the signal to attack. But our men are few. They will be reluctant to face the guns of these foreigners. There will be no danger. I shall prepare a trap which will wipe them out before they can fire a shot. Contact you immediately upon our return to America. Yours truly. Well, Billy, what luck? A lot better than I expected. I found two cars and all the equipment we need. We can get started right away. But we hadn't planned to leave until tomorrow. Why, of course not. I don't see how we can go on such short notice. Are you sure the equipment is adequate? And that the cars are in good order? Well, certainly. I checked everything. It's early yet, and there's no use wasting any more time here. I'd like to get started and get it over with. We can get there before dark, can't we? Why, uh, yes. I suppose we can. Sure we can, easily. Come on, let's go. Come on, cut it out, will you, Billy? <laughs> I'll be right behind you. Okay.
Shazam! Why were you sending that signal? Come on, talk, or Please. I'll... Please, I'll talk. The signal was to let my people know that the Malcolm expedition has entered the pass. Are they going to attack them? No. They have blocked the road in the canyon. They will blow up the mountainside and bury them under a landslide. What? <laughs> Is driving through the pass. They were not expected until tomorrow. No matter. We are ready for them. Finish laying the fuse. Was that the scorpion to give us a signal for the attack? So his message said that he may not have the opportunity now. Our orders are clear. We must destroy the white men before they enter the valley. are in our hands. Let's try to push this thing out of the way. No, it's no use. We'll have to chop it up. Well, the raft is in the car. Oh, come on, let's get them. certainly saved our lives that time. Yes, but who planned that trap for us? Must have been the natives. Step on it, Whitey. We won't be safe until we're out of this pass. The infidels have reached the Valley of the Tombs. They will again dishonor our ancient gods. Let us ride down and attack them. They are well armed, and we are too few. We must think of a way to arouse all the tribes against them. Only the volcano would speak. Its eruption has always been a signal for our men to assemble. But the volcano is sleeping. We will wake it up by diverting the river into it as ancient warriors once did. Come. Join the pieces of our map and see where he hid the lens. Why, it looks like one of the slabs inside the tomb. 
good. Let's go and get the lens. I'll not be a party to invasion of the sacred tomb. Nothing but disaster can come of it. I think I'll stay outside and keep an eye on the cars. That's a good idea, Billy. Whitey, get us some torches and bring us some tools. is blocked. Now the water will flow into the volcano craters. This is the place, all right. Yes, but we'll have to pry off the slab. Well, that won't be difficult. You brought your tools? Yes, sir. Scorpio is angry because unbelievers have entered the tomb. When the volcano is erupting, the walls may fall down on us. Somebody can give me a hand with this quick. Take care of this. It's an earthquake. They'll be caught in the tomb. Wait. Come on, let's get out of here before this joint falls apart. 